and I cap it. And for you guys carrying it around all day, put the screw band on tight. When you get home, loosen the screw band, otherwise the jar will explode as the fermentation gases um, get going. There will be bubbles and they will push brine out. So put it on a, um, a saucer. And as the, um, it will be very active for a few days. These taste best after 10 to days, or they don't have full flavor until 10 days. Then it's another, uh, they continue to develop flavor. So you might like it best at the 15 day mark or the 17 day mark. They will keep for a couple of months in the refrigerator, but I guarantee they won't last. And they're so good that uh, people swoon. I mean, they're just so much better if you're used to the sharp vinegar dilly beans. These are crisp and so flavorful because they have that complex fermentation flavor without the vinegar overwhelming you. So, um, so you're gonna have a, a, a riot of fun in your kitchen in 10 days. Um, so, so what I'm going to do is um, have you follow the recipe, which is you put the garlic in the jars. Um, well, first you're going to, I'm sorry, first you're going to prep your beans. And these are true Vermont local beans, and we know they are because they have rust on them. We have had the rainiest, nastiest month um, in June in a long time, not since I got married 30 years ago. And, and uh, so there's rust on it, ignore it. Um, they will get, um, if you leave a rusty bean in your refrigerator, it will mold quicker than normal. But for now, you can just ignore it. You top it, you, you've got knives, I don't. Top it and tail it. And if there's any really nasty bits, you can get rid of it. You're going to need about um, two cups of beans. And, and um, when you're ready, I'm working out of sequence, but when you're ready to uh, fill the jar, you put the garlic and the um, fresh dill in the jar first. And use about, um, so we're having, having the recipe. I took the recipe directly from my book, The Pickled Pantry, so I wanted to uh, push the book, of course. But um, you're gonna use half the amount it calls for. So that's two garlic instead of four, that's three sprigs of um, fresh dill instead of six. You can uh, spike up the, pe the, um, the flavor of the dill with a little bit of dill seed which I often do if I don't have store-bought dill because if you're a gardener, you know that you almost never have good fresh dill at the moment that you want to make whatever dill thing you're going to make. So I often boost the flavor. I didn't know if we were going to find the fresh dill, so I have the dill seed. Normally there's salt in the brine, uh, there, not normally, there's always salt in the brine when you ferment. And um, I've already did that and let it cool down because you can't put hot brine on the vegetables. So you are all very busy um, fill, uh, snapping your beans. You can use your knife, you can use your hands. And then when it comes to packing, and I'll be helping as you go, but when it comes to packing, it's so easy to pack beans um, and, and if they're too long, just break them off and add the, the parts that you've broken off. So I will keep talking. I've also brought some kimchi. It was a very last minute decision to make dilly beans. And I didn't have the 10 days to make the dilly beans so you know what you're getting into. But I did have time to make a five day batch of kimchi, which is spicy, so if you're ready to wake your taste buds out, I encourage you to taste the kimchi. And I have some that I made this month, and some that I made, um, what's the date on that? Ah, year old, it ages nicely. Um, 
and I have, I have jars of all sorts of ages. Last, um, last August, I made that with a group of Sterling College students. And we, um, Sterling College has the School of the New American Homestead, and they offer classes on all sorts of farmstead, homestead skills like beer brewing and bread baking and charcuterie and I will do a two-week course in sections on different aspects of home food preservation including fermentation, including um, fresh packed pickles like I talked about yesterday. Um, we will cover pressure canning for the, the fearful and um, regular canning, boiling water bath canning, uh, freezing, drying, anything that, any way you might want to preserve your garden produce. So, how do I like to eat kimchi? Um, some people, some people eat it just by the spoonful. I make a great um, uh, fried rice, which is in the pickled pantry book. There's a whole bunch of recipes using pickles in the back chapter of the pickled pantry. And it's delicious in a um, fried rice as the seasoning. You can also put it in a bowl of broth with chicken broth, noodles, and tofu. And it is an instant um, supper for the, the cold and lonely. <laughs> so are there any questions? Oh, we have, um, we have a garbage can there, but um, my able assistants will um, go around collecting your, your waste if uh, it's in your way. And maybe we can even find somewhere to compost it. Do I leave the garlic whole? I peel it. Um, and it uh, depends. If it's huge, I might slice it in half. But, um, but these are small, so I'll just, you can just stick them in whole. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, this table is the smartest table. And what they have done is, I'm saying the table, not, no, the people are the smart ones. They have taken their beans off those paper plates, and they have collected their waste on the paper plates. Isn't that clever? Yeah. Um, but my able assistants will um, go around collecting. Um, and this is my husband, Richard. And um, he's a musician, and sometimes I carry his gear. So sometimes he carries my compost. It, it all works <laughs> out. <laughs> Pardon me? Different kinds of roadies. So if anybody has any wasting, I do. So does anybody have any questions? So, and I want to emphasize that you need to loosen the jars when you get home. Um, should, the question was, should you be adding vinegar? Um, you can add a tablespoon if you're nervous, but I don't think so. I mean, I've made it without the vinegar, and it's fine and traditional. I was just giving it a little um, boost because our situation here is a little funky. You'll notice that I took the beans without washing them. So there is some funk involved. Uh, the fermentation process should take care of any unwanted bacteria, but it never hurts. When things ferment, they go through uh, stages where different bacteria take over. And there's like three different families of bacteria that are involved in vegetable fermentation. So we're just at family number, we're, we, I would have skipped family number one with the vinegar, but um, we can let the bacteria do what they want to do. If you're just joining us, it's easy to hop in. Good, good, because I, I couldn't find you. I thought we were in the hallway, but that's all right. Um, find a station. The recipe is on the um, back of the, um, of the handout. Oh, and I included my card, my card, because if you run into problems, please contact me, and I'll fix things up. So you're going to, I've made up the brine, and you're going to just um, 
pack your your jar. So you're going to okay, start we'll pack up with beans. with be be oh, we'll get you some more beans. Yes, you nip the ends. And um, are you, do you think you have enough? I'll put an extra plate down. Let's try to judge. Um, you want to put the garlic and the. Oh, you're just judging? I'm just judging. Okay. Thank you. And if there's nasty spots, you can just cut them off. Get rid of the whole thing. Here's a couple plates in case you want to just put. So a lot of recipes for fermentation require you to hold the vegetables under the brine. And I am making it simpler for you by just having you fill the jar up to the tippy top. And that way you're not, um, if something floats above the brine, it's not going to be exposed to any airborne yeast. So yes, really pack them in because the more you pack in, the more you, uh, the more you get. More is more. Um, when it, as it starts to ferment, it's a good idea not to open the jar to check on it compulsively because every time you open the jar, you're going to expose it to more um, air and born yeast. So if you um, if you need to, you can make some uh, additional brine. And you'll have to work out the, just take a cup of water, add a tablespoon of salt to it, um, heat it in the microwave a little bit so the salt melts, and then when it's cool, top off your jars again. We have, we almost have a jar. We have a beautifully packed jar here. And it's going to the very top. But it's not a race, of course. <laughs> no, well, we're not having a race. We're having a, a, um, an opportunity for people to move on and do other stuff. And there is, there is a beautiful patently packed jar of dilly beans. I'm going to show you that I can, can you hear that little, I can press down the lid. Can you do a little? So do you no, it's good that I can press down the lid. Once it gets to the point where you can't press anymore, you have a lot of gas built up there, so back off the lid so it can ooze out. And, and it will ooze out, so put it on a, on a saucer to catch it. Do you know what's bugging me about this jar? This is so this is, That bean would keep me from getting a first place ribbon. <laughs> Kathy has a sideways bean. And if she were entering this in the state fair, uh -oh. she would not get a blue ribbon uh -oh. for one sideways bean. However, it will taste as good as the up and down beans. Not so, that I care about blue ribbons. Not that she cares about blue ribbons, but I think the, um, the rusted beans might prevent oh, you from the blue down. ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take the handout and, um, and do take the card and do um, give me a call if things go awry. Done so, <laughs> so, are you going to be taller? No, you've got it all. You can squinch it in. That's good. Do you have a question here? Now we just fill them to the sauce? Yeah. Um, Should I put my little pieces in? Yes, there? put your little pieces in because okay. more is more. More is more. So, right? It, how far to the top do you put them? All the way. Right to the top. Uh, well, 
enough room for the brine to cover it, but yeah, I would be able to put all my... So you filled the brine right to the top? Right to the top. Did you remember your garlic and... Yes. Uh, Okay, you're ready to pour in brine. And you are ready to pour in brine. Right to the top. Okay, so. You are challenging. It, yes, and that's because uh, the floating bean is not going to be a problem because because the top is going to exclude the air. In a uh, crock, it would be a problem. Are you good? I think we are. That is great. Is your kimchi recipe also in your pickling? It is. Um, my kimchi recipe is the mild kimchi. It's in the book. It's in actually in both the pickled pantry and the kitchen know-how. And they're both for sale, and it's 25% off, and it's a, it's, a, it's a good idea to buy it. And there's a lot more about fermentation in both books. Good. So you've got room to expand, but do loosen the top. That older kimchi? I know, it's really good. Yeah, it um, develops a lot of complexity. It softens a little, but as kimchi ages, it gets really complex in flavor. So thank you for, for doing these demos. And, um, and I expect, you know, in 10 days, if you want to write to me and say, these are the best beans I've ever tasted, that would be great. And, and if they're not the best beans, you can tell me that too. So this is going to be okay for a four-hour ride home? the rest of the day here? Yes, it will be, because it's kind of inert right now. But um, now we don't it doesn't any, we don't, love... We don't, we don't have one of your tighteners. Does this have to be... No, that's only for canning. Okay. Yeah. Um, in general, it's not good to ferment at 90 degrees, because the fermentation will take off too fast. But um, it, it's okay for taking it home okay. today. Just. Okay. Just keep it around 70. Yes. Is the vinegar in the brine already? The vinegar is not in the brine because I forgot it. Okay, so we'll put it in at home? You can if you want to. It's a half recipe, or you can skip it. If you're a little nervous, add it. If you're not nervous, don't add it because you don't need it, really. How much vinegar do you usually The recipe calls for um, a little bit of vinegar, and that's because in a funky situation, it will prevent um, bad bacteria bad from bacteria. getting a hold. But at 90 degrees, probably the other bacteria will kick in really fast. You won't taste the difference by not putting the vinegar? No, you won't taste a difference okay. with or without the vinegar because it's the fermentation. <gasps> There's vinegar. They put it in a spray bottle. Okay, for the future ones. If you want to spray in, if you want to give your dilly beans a spritz of vinegar. Do you want to? I'm not going to do mine. So. Let's do ours and we'll compare them. You do yours <laughs> with vinegar and I'll do mine without. Just like okay, that. So how are we going to be able to help you? Uh, I know mine are better. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just put some in there at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Can I just dump yeah. these on the top? Yes, of they will float. They might not um, bring couple, the flavor. A couple as of fingers full? Uh, less than a couple, just uh, like a pinch. Like that? Yeah. There you go. Pinch. And then sprinkle it all the way to the bottom? It's it's fine. It's This is... Spritz of vinegar? Yeah, this is what your grandmother did without the recipe. I'm giving you a spritz of Thank vinegar. You. I appreciate my spritz of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> and it's too full. No, nope, it's never too full. Okay. <laughs> Should I still put another tablespoon or so in no, a half No, no. No, it's got the know. vinegar. Now we have solved the problem. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Where, there is space for you to join us um, and make some dilly beans. You'll take home a jar that you will ferment on your counter. 
thank you. Are you going to be here for a little bit? I think I am going to go by your book, and I'd yeah. like you to sign sure, it. Sure, sure. Thank, thank you. you. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you at another fair. Actually, we brought pickles with us <laughs> from last year. Oh, okay. So they do last. Excellent flavor. Everybody that tries them are just about. Which pickles do you make? Uh, we do the dill. Oh. And bread and butter. Oh, great. Thank you. Your book is a big help. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this pickle of uh, dilly bean demonstration, and um, goodbye. <laughs> keep in touch. Bye bye. Yes, we'll keep in touch. They're all on sale at the bookstore. Um, <laughs> Wait, he, he's a what? <laughs>